Hi, this is Carl from Web Courses Bangkok, and this is lesson two of the Photoshop Basics course. We're going to be covering the user interface, so you'll know all the different areas of Photoshop, things like the toolbar and the panels, and even the options panel. So by knowing the area and the interface of Photoshop better, you'll be able to create your designs even quicker. So let's get started. So this is the actual interface for Photoshop. It looks quite complicated to start off with, but if you break it up into its sections, it's much more understandable. And as you get better and better with Photoshop, you'll find that having the panels and all this information on the screen actually makes you work faster. So first of all, I want to show you the toolbar. The toolbar is on the left-hand side and it's got all the various tools that you have. Now a nice thing about the toolbar is if you hover your mouse over it, so just click once, hover your mouse and leave it there, it will tell you what that actual tool is. Now if I move down one, you'll see that it tells me again rectangular marquee and it's got a letter next to it. That letter is in fact the shortcut key, so if I now press M, I then select the marquee tool. If we move down, we've got the um, polygon lasso tool. Now these might be different for you, so you'll actually find that some of them are hiding underneath as submenus. So if I click on polygon lasso tool, I can see that there's three types of this tool. There's a lasso tool, polygon, and magnetic. And then later in the Photoshop series, we'll explain exactly what these do. Now, a very important tool is right at the bottom, which is here. You've got two colors here. Now, generally, they're defaulted to black and white, and these give you the color picker. So just by clicking on the color, you can actually then start choosing a different color. So I'm just going to choose red and click OK, and you can see that it's appeared there on the toolbar. The one at the back is the background, so you've got foreground and background. Now each of the tools has a property, so if I select now, go back to the top and go to the move tool. At the top here, the properties bar shows you the properties for that tool. Again, if I go to marquee, you can see that this changes. And if I carry on going down the toolbar, you'll see that it all changes. Now one that's easy to understand is the text tool, so if you look at the T on the left hand side, it's in the middle. You'll see that at the top here, it's got all the tools that you need, all the properties that you need for the text tool. Things like the uh, the font, the size, whether it's bold, things like that. So uh, you can see that for every part of the tool, there's a properties bar. So make sure you always keep an eye at the top of Photoshop for each of those. So why not try going through each of the tools and just seeing how the properties bar changes? Next we have the menu bar, and this is going right along the top here. Now just to show this, I'm going to go to File, and you can see that the drop down there has got a lot of different settings, and you'll use those settings throughout the course, so you'll be learning more and more about each of the menu items later. I'd just like to go to File and New, and then I'm going to select Web, Preset, Size 1024 by 768 and the name I'm not going to change right now, I just want to show something. So please do the same, do File and New, select Preset Web, and then Size 1024 by 768. And when you're ready, click OK. Now what you'll see is the canvas open, it's called the canvas. Now what I would like to do is show one of the menu items called Show Grid. If I go to View, Show, and then Grid, Okay, you'll see a grid then appear on here. And we're going to look at that in a moment and talk about the different types of grids that we have and also the rulers. Next we have the palettes. The palettes are these squares on the right hand side. Now you may have different ones to me, so if you do want to get it exactly the same, just go to Window, Workspace, and then make sure you've got essentials on there and you'll have it very similar to me. Right, first of all what I want to do is change this so it's sort of better for when we're actually designing websites. 
Now, swatches is not something that we generally use too much, so I'm just going to double click on the word swatches and you'll see that it hides. If I double click again, it comes back. So I'm just going to double click and hide that. Now, already one of the most important panels that we use is much bigger, which means I can see a lot more information. That panel is called the layers panel. The layers panel here is where all the information of the different elements on your screen are contained. So if you've got, say, 200 layers, you're going to see them all listed down here. And we're going to be doing that in one of the next Photoshop tutorials. Now, one that I always use, a panel that I always like to use, is the info panel because it contains information about measurements. So I'm just going to go to Window. And these list all the different panels that you can see. So I'm going to click on Info here, and you can see that Info appears just on the right-hand side. Now, if I move my cursor around the, the canvas, you can see the X and Y changing. Now, one thing I would like to do is I'm just going to quickly use the Rectangle tool here. You can see that the width and the height are changing. Okay, so as you're drawing any sort of object or maybe changing a picture, changing the size, you'll be able to see the width and the height in the info panel. And this is very useful if you want to get things pixel perfect. Speaking of pixels, I'd like to show you how to see pixels rather than say the default way of showing which is centimeters and inches. Because like I said, it's always for pixels for web designers. Now again, we're going to go back to view, and I'm going to show rulers here. It's just below the show, and go to rulers. Now if it says 0, 1, 2, 3, it's probably because it's set to inches. Now if I put my cursor right in the middle of the ruler, and I'd like you to do the same, so put your cursor in the middle of the ruler, right click, and then select pixels. Now you should see it change, and it should go all the way over to about 1024 pixels. So the rule is very useful for a, a guideline of seeing how many pixels you are. And the grid that it shows is actually to that as well. Each of these grid elements, these tiny squares, is 15 pixels. So that really does allow you to measure things quite accurately. Now lastly, we have tabs. The tabs can be found at the top here, and it allows you to have more than one document open at the same time. Okay, so this one's called Untitled One. So I'm just going to go to File and New, and it will call it automatically Untitled Two, and I'm going to click OK. I don't need to change any of the other settings. So if I click OK, I now see two tabs, and I can quickly go from each design just by clicking on the tab. If you want to remove the tab from here, you click and drag it, and then you'll be able to see both of your designs at the same time. So, if I click and drag that back, a blue line will appear and it will be backed, and that's actually called docking, docking the tabs. So, just a quick overview. We've got the, to the toolbar on the left-hand side here that contains all the tools. As I select each tool, I can see that the properties bar here changes, so it's a good idea to always keep your eye on that to see what changes are there and what settings are available. Then we looked at the menu bar and we turned on um, the grid, and the grid allows you to see and measure things very, very accurately. Then we looked at the different panels, and one of the panels that we like to turn on is the info panel just by going to Window and then Info. And like I said, the most important of the panels is probably the Layers panel. And then lastly, we looked at the tabs, and the tabs are at the top left-hand corner here, and they go right across. And if you want to close one, all you have to do is click on there. It'll ask you to save, and you just click No. Great, so that's everything for the Lesson 2 of the Photoshop Basics course. And if you have any questions, you can go to www.webcoursesbangkok.com and find out more information about the screencasts or our courses. Thanks a lot. Bye.